Bob Smearfack. He'll fuck it up for the rest of us. Hello, I'm Bob Smearfack, but not really. This series is designed for theological seminary students with approaching exams who have not had time to read the Bible, and for manufacturers of single-use baptismal gowns who know that more swimmers means more profit. Matthew, chapter 20. Let's go. In this chapter, Jesus elaborated on God's last first, first last policy. It seems you can compare God's Kingdom of Heaven initiative with the owner of a winery who rolled out of bed early to offer a bunch of guys a job picking grapes. He struck a deal for them to work all day for one cent and said, let's get to it. At about nine o'clock in the morning, he found a bunch more guys loitering in the town square. He told them, go pick grapes and I'll give you a fair paycheck. So they took him up on it. Then he did the same thing at lunchtime and again at three in the afternoon. Then at 5 p.m. he found even more guys putzing around in the square and he asked them, what gives? Why all the non-productivity? They said, we're unemployed. He said, not anymore. Go pick grapes and I'll set you up with a fair deal. Now, when the final whistle blew, the owner told his foreman to pull everybody in and pay them off, starting with the last guys to be hired. So the guys who started at 5 o'clock rolled up and got paid off. One cent. But when they got around to the guys who'd been humping all day, those guys thought, nice, we're going to make bank. But they got one cent. So they were like, whoa, 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 what douchebaggery is this? These bums have been picking grapes for an hour and they're getting paid the same as us who have been sweating our asses off since the butt crack of dawn? Not cool. But the owner looked at one of them and shot back, listen bud, I didn't disrespect you. Did you sign up with me for a penny or didn't you? Take your penny and hit it. I'm going to give the same to this last guy as I gave to you. Are you saying I can't do what I want with my own stuff? Is your perception jaded because I'm a cool dude? And Jesus told the boys that's the way it was. Last come, first served. And he added that a lot of people were going to get drafted into God's army, but only a few of them were going to pass the physical. Now on their way to J-Town, Jesus and the boys pulled off at a rest stop and he spelled it out for them again. We're rolling into Jerusalem. Your boy's going to get thrown under the bus by one of his own to the big religious hoo-haws and the scribes. They're going to give him the death penalty. Then they're going to hand him off to the Romans who are going to make fun of him, beat the shit out of him, and then hoist him up so he has a really nice view of the city, if you know what I mean. And then on day three after that, he was going to do a full frontal resurrection. For whatever reason, this seemed like the perfect time for James and John's mom to cruise through and suck up to Jesus and ask a big favor for her kids. The J-man gave her the floor. What do you need? She said, okay, here's the thing. When everybody's sitting in the big chairs up in the sky house, let it be my boys who are sitting adjacent to you. You can hardly blame her, as her husband Zeb's fishing business may well have been going down the toilet after James and John had left him holding the nets to go hang with the big J. She may have just been looking to recoup some lost profits. But Jesus said, whoa, you're getting ahead of yourself. At this table, I'm going to be drinking out of the big boy cup. Can you guys drink out of the big boy cup? And can you guys handle the big boy treatment? Because that's what I'm going to be getting. But James and John said, oh yeah, we can do it. So Jesus told them, okay, well, you'll be drinking the big boy cup and you'll be getting the big boy treatment. But the seating arrangement in the sky house isn't going to be my call. He said the father part of himself was going to be laying out the place cards. Unfortunately, when the other ten members of the fabulous Jesus Boys caught wind of this proposal, they got pissed off at James and John. But Jesus said, hold on, this is the corporate structure in the Gentile world, that it's a top-down hierarchy and when you're on the bottom you know it. But he said God's org chart was going to be flipped upside down. Whoever wants to be a star needs to act like a personal assistant, and whoever wants to be in charge had better start shining shoes. Jesus said, even your boy took this gig not to get helped, but to help out, and to trade in his vital signs for a lot of other people. Anyway, they must have been in Jericho when all of this went down, because the next thing they did was leave Jericho. Notwithstanding, a lot of people were following Jesus when he split that place. Now get this, a pair of guys with really poor eyesight who heard tell that Jesus was on the move started shouting for some attention. They asked for a little mercy and started dropping names, referring to Jesus by the royal lineage from whence he came but with whom he shared no DNA. That annoyed the crowd enough that they shouted them down and told them to put a cork in it. But that only made the blurry-eyed guys go even louder. So Jesus just stopped and asked them, what can I do for you boys? They laid it right out for him. We want you to hook us up with 20-20 vision. Jesus really felt for them and gave them a very ultra hands-on LASIK treatment right there. And now that they could see where they were going, they joined the entourage. Next in this series, we'll move on to chapter 21. Spoiler alert. The J-Man sends out a detachment to confiscate an adult donkey and a baby donkey and says if anybody objects, just use code word Jesus. As always, I'm not a religious figure, but if you want me to save you or damn you to hell, I'll do my best. Bob Smirfak, tú eres un douchebag, ateísta de mierda. Now go back to your corner and cry, Mommy. Gracias, amigo.